Hi everyone, it's Sarah. So, thanks for joining me today. Um, this episode's a little bit different than my past couple of episodes. I thought I'd sit down and, you know, just kind of talk a little bit about things. Yeah. Have my drink, and so we're all set to go. So, I wanted to talk a little bit today about the concept of being a multi-potentialite. Now, the term multi-potentialite um, was coined by another self-proclaimed multi-potentialite named Emily Wapnick. There is a fantastic TED Talk that she has done on this subject, and that was actually what I had stumbled upon. Um, it actually started because I had sort of kind of put out to the universe to help me get some direction in life, where I wanted to go with things. And it was not long after I had my daughter. And I, you know, just felt a little unfulfilled, but I also felt very kind of confused. Like I have always sort of been one of those people where it's like, I like to do all the things. I love to learn how to do new things. I mean, and to give you an idea of things that I have done in my life, ballet, choir, cheerleading, briefly, marching band, color guard. Um, I was on the dive team for a year. I did kendo, beekeeping when I got older, um, all sorts of crafting, everything from markers to acrylic paints. I did oil paints in college. Nowadays, I really enjoy 3D printing, using my laser, sublimation. And then on top of it, my daytime job. I mean, yeah, I, I'm here. I'm a YouTuber, but most of us have daytime jobs or in my case, a moonlighting job because I work the night shift. I work in medicine. I'm a healthcare provider, a PA to be specific, in internal medicine at that which is where you kind of have to be a sort of a jack of all trades um, for many different areas. So I've always kind of just been this want to do everything sort of person. And it's always been very conflicting because everybody around me seemed to be much more focused on just one or two things. And I could never really just sit with one or two things. I mean, I could for like a period of time, but then I would need to move on, do something else. A lot of times I will circle back to things, especially in art making. I'll go through a period where it's like I really want to do watercolor kind of style or comic style. A number of times I wanted to try and restart a webcomic. I feel like I could almost set my calendar by it. But I just, I felt very scattered and I felt bad because it was very scattered. And part of that is because we live in a world nowadays where specializing has become really what people expect they it's impossible to be what we used to call a renaissance man a good example of a renaissance man would be somebody like leonardo da vinci or benjamin franklin where they kind of knew everything about everything and that worked in the 1700s or the 1500s if you're leonardo nowadays i mean the scope of knowledge is just way too fast for one person to learn. I mean, it's impossible. Even, you know, in medicine, it's like you can, if you follow the doctor out, you can specialize and really focus down on one area. Um, if you're a PA, you have the advantage that you can start in one area or in move to another and then learn all you can there. But it's just, it's impossible to know everything about everything these days. And that is in part, I think, why individuals like me get a little stuck. Um, so, back, you know, even as much as 60 years ago, really before we hit the technology renaissance, we used to actually be very useful people. We would be these generalists where it's like you kind of knew how to do a little bit of everything. If you think about living on a farm you kind of had to know how to milk a cow you, had, you didn't know how to fix the tractor you didn't know how to mend clothes you know those are all very different things but you, and you didn't necessarily have to be really specialized in all of them but you needed to know enough to do all of them so that all really kind of changed around the space race and now suddenly there was this focus on really becoming an expert in one single field and that's not necessarily a bad thing i mean look where we've come in 60 years. I mean, we've gone from developing enough rocket technology to sort of man on the moon to holding, you know, the entire human knowledge and opinion, both good and bad, in the palm of your hand to, you know, using generative 
AI techniques to really enhance our aspects of creativity. And I use the word generative AI for a reason, but that's another video. So I really kind of felt very confused. And when I put it out to the universe, literally the next day, I was kind of scrolling through social media. I forget where I was. I actually think I might have been on Facebook, which was a rarity in and of itself. And I stumbled onto Emily Wapnick's TED Talk video. And I listened to her talk about what it's like to be someone who wants to sort of do all the things, doesn't want to niche down. And I just, like, the world shut it. It was like, oh my god, this is who I am. This is why I feel as stuck as I do, because I keep trying to find that perfect niche, that perfect specialization that I can just stay in forever and ever and never get dry of. And I realized I wasn't embracing who I really am. And that is somebody who is a lifeline learner who always wants to, you know, change things up a little bit, get involved into something, master it a little bit, get what they need from it, and either take and add the skill to my repertoire or set it aside. And it just made me feel like absolutely fantastic. I didn't feel broken anymore. And it was that element of, can't, how do I embrace this? How do I bring it to me? And so what actually happened was I kind of realized I had already started doing that and I didn't even notice it. You know, the first time was actually when I took a better look at my job. So I became a physician assistant. I got my license in 2014. I went to school, started May of 2012. I finished July of 2014. The program runs straight. It's an intensive master's program, sort of like... um an abridged version of med school, if you will. And but anyway, I graduated. And most of the time in school, I thought for sure I really wanted to be a cardiothoracic PA. It's like I wanted to be one of those people helping put the heart on bypass and grafting and doing all of that. I'm kind of an introvert, so I'm not a huge people person. So you know, patients would be asleep most of the time. And I thought for sure that was what I wanted to do. And I took a job right out of school with a group um, in the area. And Initially, it was really cool, and then things just kind of started to fall apart. Now, there's a lot of factors there. Um, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have taken a position where they had previously had two PAs who retired after 20 years, and then they were replacing with a single new grad. That really should have been a red flag. Also, if you're um, a PA looking for a job and you're looking for something in surgery, before you take the job, it's really important to see what the physician that you're working with, the surgeon that you're working with, is like in the operating room versus outside the operating room because they are two totally different people. Um, and that really kind of caused a lot of problems. So I'm just going to kind of leave it to that. Bottom line is that I ended up kind of leaving that job in less than a year and I got hired on to the group that I'm with now, which is a hospital's position. Hospital medicine is where you are the internal medicine team, essentially. You're taking care of patients exclusively in the hospital. You don't follow them outpatient. You just kind of manage more the acute care setting where they're sick enough that they need to be the ho in the hospital and need to be, you know, taken care of. And with internal medicine, like I had said before, you really kind of have to be a jack or a, and or a master of many different disciplines. Like you need to know a decent amount about cardiology, GI, nephrology, critical care, all of that. Like, it's one of those where it's like two cases are never the same. Do I see some very common ailments over and over again? Oh, yeah. And that has made life easier. It's like, okay, I know I'm dealing with this. So I've got this set of per things that I do, you know, depending on the diagnosis. But more often than not, a patient is going to have more than one thing wrong with them. So, it was one of those fields where I actually, like, never thought I would go into. And it was actually a rotation in school that I really didn't care for. And yet I ended up in this field. And I have been with my current group for eight years as of this month. The longest job that I have ever held in my life. And, I mean, I've made some changes, switched up things within the job um, in 2018. So after about 
three years, um, and I volunteered to pilot the night program where assessment levels are kind of the ones here in the hospital. Docs are on call to give them the chance to sleep. And so I'm the primary management source here in the hospital, which has really afforded a lot of autonomy and it's given me a chance to grow. It's still a very diverse field. And it wasn't until I had watched, I'm getting off topic, it wasn't until I had watched this video on being a multi-potentialite that I realized, oh, that's why this has ended up working, even if I don't always feel super great going to work. And nobody does every day, even though I don't 100% enjoy my nights. The reason why I keep coming back is there's this level of it never being boring. It's always a bit different. I'm always being challenged. I'm ha always having to kind of learn things. And believe me, I'm always having to learn things. It's kind of funny, actually. I regularly... <laughs> My patients ask me questions that I regularly like, I'm not 100% sure what's going on. You know, we're going to have to do additional testing. I said, I'm going to do, look some things up. I mean, that doesn't happen as often as it did when I was a little more inexperienced, but the world of medicine keeps changing. I mean, good Lord, when the pandemic hit, and it was like treating that was, uh, I felt like we were changing how we were treating patients on a daily basis. So this job really does actually fit into my personality and that I want that diversity, that challenge, that always learning kind of element of being a multi-potentialite. And I realized that it's like I do have a place. It's okay to want to learn to do all the things. It's okay to not necessarily know at the age of 35 what I want to be when I grow up because it keeps changing. I mean, that's that's okay. And if anything... It's kind of advantageous in this day and age. Like, let me give you an example. So my husband is a, a the exact title, I believe, is senior researcher for artificial intelligence systems at his job. He, to make a long story short, he's a government contractor. He's an engineer. He works with an engineering group in the area. They do a lot of government work. They also do some different, you know, contractual work, like. I know he's talked about, you know, some NOAA projects that he's working on. Lots of really cool stuff. Um, and specifically, he works with designing systems that work with machine learning and image processing. And when you ask him, well, how do you get that kind of job? You know, what schooling background you get? He's going to tell you that the vast majority of that has been stuff he's learned on his own. Now, he's got a bachelor's in biomedical engineering. His master's is actually in anatomy and physiology. He had been actually studying like a PhD in like neuroscience with splicing neurons. And it was the computer software that he had written in MATLAB to process those hundreds and hundreds of pictures of like neuron cells that he was trying to interpret for his PhD project. It was actually that programming that he had written to process those images that got him his first job and that sort of led into where he is now so most of the stuff that he has needed for his job has been stuff that he's actually learned outside of school to give another example with my husband as i mentioned that whole masters in anatomy and physiology and a focus on neuroscience so one of the cool things that they're doing with um developing chips and processors and how to interpret data is looking at the way br the brain actually processes data and how we can use that model to then work to create better systems of processing huge amounts of data in real time. And for anybody who's a little bit paranoid, he, you know, is very in tune with the current world of AI. And the reason I use the front is generative AI is because nothing is sentient at this point. Everything is algorithmic processing it's if you get an answer that seems makes you seem a little uncomfortable it's because the system is trying to give you what it thinks you want like it's using your responses and trying to answer you in what it thinks is the best way possible these systems are not sentient but using the brain as a way to try and model and get it to interpret data better the fact that he had that narrow background has helped enable him to do a better job with helping to create some of these you know the systems now, with my job in medicine, it's been one of those where it's like, I mean, I definitely would say creativity has played a role in helping me with my job and that ability to think and detect patterns. And what I necessarily 
essay that always wanting to learn has been super helpful. I mean, it is in the sense that medicine is always changing. So being able to update and stay on top of, you know, if there's been changes in treatments and drugs, but to really kind of appeal to my desire to learn and kind of do all the things I've had to kind of, you know, step out of that realm. That's where the idea for this channel came from. So I love to learn new scraps. I love to try new things. And I am trying to, in my spare time, actually work on creating a business where I help people bring their creations and desires to life using technology they might not necessarily have available. I'm fortunate that I have some funding and I could purchase some of these more expensive tools like a 3D printer and the laser and being able to help people create those ideas. And if like they're not sure, like say they want a specific looking sign for their wedding, how do I make that work? And I like that challenge. I mean, that's kind of the business that I'm trying to build up on the side in conjunction with this YouTube channel where I get to show some of those experiments and where I get to kind of, you know, hang out, talk with you guys a little bit about whatever's sort of on my mind. Because again, I'm a multi potentially. For all you know, I could come on one day and start talking about some of the science and politics. And I'm living that. That's a whole rabbit hole that I don't necessarily want to go down right now. But it is a hole there that I could do. So, I mean, so if you're wondering why this channel seems a little across the board over time, I'm, you know, experimenting, finding what works, finding my voice and testing things because that is who I am. That is my desire to always kind of be like, let's try that. So admittedly being a multi-potentialite, you're probably thinking, well, how do you balance doing all these things? So it's one of my the things my colleagues ask and they're like, so where do you make time for that? It's like, well, how do you make time for reading or working out? You just kind of schedule it. And it's not that I Every single hobby that I have, I do every single day or even in a week or month period. I mean, some things, like I said, I cycle through some things. And then sometimes I pick things up and I have to put them down. I actually kept honeybees for three seasons and we moved and I really couldn't keep them. So I had to set that hobby down. And I was okay with that. It was one of those where it's like it was very interesting to learn about honeybees, how to try and care for them. I never really had a ton of like, honey production success or anything because they were young hives. But it, I don't, it was worth learning that and then setting it aside. Um, another thing that I hope actually eventually to come back to is, and this was sort of a pandemic hobby, was I actually learned how to knit. And I honestly really loved knitting. Like it was deeply relaxing. It like, it, quiet the voices in my mind, if you will, during, you know, March and April. And I kind of, you know, kept on going. And it was also really good because I actually ended up with what we believe was COVID. April 2020, I was really sick. And basically, I spent two whole days where it was like I didn't get off the couch because my oxygen sats would drop a bit and my heart rate would go up. I just spent two whole days knitting constantly, um, learned the movements and, you know, kind of kept me sane and I was able to make the additional projects. The downside was that after doing that for about a year, I developed a repetitive stress injury in my thumb. And so as a result, I've kind of had to set that aside. I still have all of my stuff and I hope to maybe at some point pick it back up, maybe add small amounts in the future. But, you know, it's okay to know that that hobby was there and that I've set it aside and I've picked up other things. Like I said, learning to fire a laser and engrave material and cut material and experiment with how I can make that material look certain ways. So some of the things that I, you know, show off here. So my advice to those of you who sometimes feel like, you know, you can't quite niche yourself down, you kind of want to do all the things and, and that's just everybody tells you, why can't you just pick one thing? I'm here to tell you that it's okay to not want to do just one thing or even just a couple of things. Being a generalist and somebody who wants to learn something new all the time is honestly a strength in this day and age. And use it to your advantage. Be proud of the fact that you're 
greatest skill is your ability to learn. I don't know what I want to do for the rest of my life, and I hope it changes many times over. That's yeah, an awesome thing. So anyway, that was just kind of my thoughts. I'm sure I will probably get into some different stuff. I hope, yeah, this content was valuable for you guys. Feel free to check out some of my other videos that I've done recently. And as always, have a good day. Bye.